Open your do file again. I am trying to zoom in. One second, guys. One second. Um, yeah, still sitting at the back. I don't know why, but would be would be very helpful if they sat closer. All right. So we've got the week three now. Type week four. Please, please, type this. Let's get started. We have only 40 minutes left to do the uh, well, huge number of tasks. To complete the huge number of tasks, I could say. Um, first things first, let's look at gross hourly pay uh, for the UK labor, labor, labor force uh, in 2012. Shh. If you aren't really focusing, please leave and talk outside. It, it's distracting others, not only yourselves, it's distracting others, and others cannot hear my voice. Um, first thing is, um, let's start with our basic <coughs> code book code or syntax for revealing the uh, basic information about the variable, and that variable is our pay. See again, this the the syntax or the code is in blue, the variable is in black, and notice that the comment is in green. Yeah, we, we should be able to distinguish between them. Now, highlight, highlight. As I said, we, we know I've given you a background about what we're gonna do now. We're looking at the wages. Yeah, our pay is a variable for gross hourly pay. Now, most important of all this here is this range. If we interpret this as the gross hourly pay, the, there is someone in the, at least one person in this survey is getting about <coughs> 47 pence per hour. Yeah, less than 50p per hour. <coughs> there is at least someone getting 932.50 pounds. That's an hourly rate, right? So I guess someone is getting, working illegally, someone is really getting much more, probably illegally, <laughs> yeah, maybe drug money per hour. Yeah. <laughs> You know, never know what. Do you believe in the UK someone could earn a thousand pounds an hour? Huh? Thousand pounds an hour? This is this is what it is, yeah. Can anyone? Can someone? Can anyone could earn this? Can anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Drug money. Yeah. Now, have you heard about chief executive officers who are earning about ten million a year? How much would their hourly wage be? Yes. Ten million a year. 10 million a year, you can have a, a, some of big, big uh, chief executive officer if you put together their basic wages plus bonuses plus their allowances, probably 10 million some. Footballers. Footballers maybe, yeah. Hourly rated thousand, is, is for footballers is two peanuts, 1,000 pounds, yeah? But it is, it is revealing that what, what, what important thing here is that we can, we can take is, is the range of pay in the UK. Someone has earning as little as 50p or less. Someone earning is out, but that's pay inequality. Yours yeah? not working, right? Hmm? Not Yours not working. Right. What, what's the problem? What does the message say in the, is there any red message? Alright, let's start now. So that's interesting. Now, let's delve into it and then tabulate the data. Let's tabulate it. Um, tab our pay. <coughs> yes, execute.
Let's look at what it is. What we have here. Look, look, look at this, guys. The bottom last last category, the last pay rate, 932.50 pounds, is earned by one person. Well, you see, these are the hourly rates. Some people are earning 320 pounds an hour, so on and so forth. <laughs> That's fake. Actually, it is not necessarily fake. Some lawyers get paid that much when they are on uh, client pay, you know, client sites and working on our number of, I mean, yeah, forensics. For index, you could think of, yeah, the different people, you know, depending on, you know, investment bankers make huge sums of money. I, I know, you know, their hourly rate is small. Uh, sorry, not small, given that they they trade and if they are millions of pounds profits and gains they take okay um, interestingly there are also people earning less than the mi legal minimum you see three pounds sixty five Let's go back now again, guys. Look now. Um, one thing is, I'm trying to tell you one thing here from this mass, uh, this using this uh, tab command. Don't use tab command for continuous data. Tab command creates frequency table for discrete variables with the categories, you know, discrete categories. Continuous data like hourly, pay, your age, your wages, your weights, they are continuous data. We don't use them. For continuous data, we use summary statistics, mean, median, standard deviations. So keep this in mind. When you write the essay, you don't want to have this long table sitting there. This is good for categories like male, female, so gender, ethnicity, you can have a few categories. Yeah? But this looks like a huge table if you just copy and paste it. So the leftmost column is basically showing us the categories. In this case, wages. And then here they are frequencies. These are frequencies. So 15 people in this sample get paid 3 pounds and 75 pence a year, uh, um, uh, an hour. Yeah? One person gets. So this is real data and has real consequences. These people must be illegally working. <laughs> Getting paid less than minimum pay, you will realize that you're underpaid, so you will complain. Yeah? But uh, these people probably don't complain. So I don't know why this is low data. I, I, don't, I can't think of this being the uh, fictitious data, fake data. But given that late quarterly rate, of course, is, is an official, not necessarily official, but some survey that is reliable. I assume this is because I didn't get to the details of the file itself myself, but I would recommend that you do it. You read about it. All right, next. The best way to describe the data when it's continuous is to <coughs> create a summary statistics table. For that, we need to type this code. Summarize our pay, but we want some details, so comma detail. Now, I want you to, to look at this, the, the code summarize. It's a Z, not S. Yeah? Okay. Some students actually type S and then there was an error. This is because this software is American software. <laughs> and also, it's international. Outside Britain, everyone uses Z for summarize. It's only in Britain we use S. So double click and hit execute. <coughs> does anyone want to comment on this summary statistic? What does it tell you? What does it reveal? Anyone? Yes. Mm hmm Go on. Uh, I don't know. It gives the median. 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 So no, no mean, sorry. mean is the average wage. Yeah? yeah. It's the sum of all values and divide by divided by um, number of observations or so number of people. <laughs> Look, average pay here is about 13 pound 50 pence an hour. Fair enough. Uh, but note that average is calculated using every single value. And then remember, we had some odd guys earning 9,900 pounds an hour, and then some odd guys earning less than a pound. So 
it's these are outliers. We want to get rid of them. It's basically yeah. like in the in the fifth percentile. Yeah, fifth uh, fiftieth percentile oh. is median. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want to look at as well. If there is an outlier, there are outliers. Yeah, because median ignores the outliers or it cuts off the top head and the bottom head. It ignores in other words. It doesn't necessarily cut off. Yeah. Median <coughs> is the middle value. If you rank the data from smallest to largest. Median is the middle value, right? So median average is much more accurate here than mean average. Yes, go on. Um, you know when you're putting out the box plot, how do you know how, what to mark as, in like, uh, as an outlier? Would you just use your common knowledge or would you have to calculate? You have to find out what the, where the outliers start, from which value onwards the outliers start. It looks like if you want to, let's say, in this case, if you want to remove the top 1% earners, the top wealthy people, let's say, you take the 99th percentile and below. And in this case, 99th percentile below earn 48 pounds and 8 cent a pence an hour. So we'll do that now. That's a good question. How do you remove them? We'll, I'll show you how to remove that, yeah? And then we graph them only, these middle ones, the 99% the, the people. Uh, by the way, have you caught up with us? Yeah. Do you have the data open? Yeah. If you have the data, yeah, you downloaded it. Yeah, you have it. Go to the. Yeah, no, go to the tool. Download the data. Download the data. Download the data. Now we can exit the data. Okay, let's, let's now do this. Quick exercise here, guys. What's the meaning of standard deviation? Recall it from your lecture, guys. What, what was the definition? Do you remember the formula? Yeah, I remember the formula. So what's, you, can you define the formula in your own words rather than writing it down? It's just, what does it mean? No, I can only, I just memorized it. I okay. All right, if you memorize it, try to put some a sense to that formula. Then you will real. Remember the formula was about xi minus x bar or yeah. n minus 1 squared and square root, yeah? Now, yes. See the mean value. Yes. How much the group of people are away from? The yeah, uh, it basically it tells us the deviation from average. So it's the spread of the data. Standard deviation tells us the average spread from the average value. Spread from so how spread out the data, right? Um, that tells us a huge difference here between. People earning, I mean, people in this in this sample. Some people earning, a, you know, if you look at the spread between the data, it's a mean minus the standard deviation gives us a negative value because standard deviation is higher than the mean. So huge difference. The result, the, the reason is because of this high awareness is skewing the data to that end, right? We have to re get rid of them. So that's something next we do. Anyway, for now, ignore it. Ignore this standard deviation because it's not a good representative of the uh, actual data. Did you raise your hand? <coughs> no? Okay. Next. We said 50th percentile is the median. Yes. 10 pounds, 87. And the mean is average, the arithmetic average, it's 13 pounds, 53, 54. Now, the, if the mean and median are, are not equal, then we have a skewed distribution of wages. We will cover that next week. Anyway, now what's the 25th percentile telling us? What does it tell us? Percentiles, quartile, what do they do? Mechanics of it. You remember mechanics? So, 25th percentile is just giving us the, I would say, highest hourly pay for the bottom 25% of people. Clear? Highest pay for the bottom 25% of people. 50th percentile is obviously the median, the middle value. 
And 75th percentile is the third quartile. In other words, what is the meaning of that? Does anyone want to interpret that? Does anyone want to interpret that, please? What's 75th percentile? It's the minimum pay, uh, in this case, it would be the minimum pay of the top 25% people who earn higher, highest value. In other words, I would say it's the top earners or top 25% earners or workers who earn higher pay, top 25%. And their minimum is 16 pound for 49 pence. Clear? Makes sense, guys? So these numbers really make sense. They are, they are not odd. We really need to be able to interpret, impart the information from these numbers. Stats really is an important uh, subject in that sense. Uh, it's not just numbers, but they have real, real meaning behind them. And no, look at this 99th percentile. That tells us the maximum wage of the bottom 99 percent of people, so the maximum, or it's the minimum wage of the top one percent people, yeah, 99th percentile, 100 minus 99 used as one percent, yeah, so the top one percent earners will get minimum at least 48 pounds an hour, so that will be our sticking point here now, we will, next we will remove these outliers from our analysis, we will just look at the wages of people who earn up to 48 pounds and 8 pence an hour. The rest will be outlier for us. Okay, let's go and start looking at that. By the way, what is interquartile range? But we'll come back to that now later, if you cannot remember. When you do graphs uh, for, it's uh, only bar charts, sorry. Right, let's, oh, where is it? Okay. Um, let's now, doing some serious work, serious work, more interesting work, I should say, um, so split the data oh, the data by gender that's what we are going to do now first thing is we will rename our gender variable into a more sensible give it a more sensible name um, I think in your guide in your lab guide Tom wants us to rename sex to female. You know the gender variable, sex, S E double X. We'll rename it to gender. Yeah? Um, so type rename sex, which is this variable that shows us the gender of the sample to um, gender. Yeah? So this code is, is telling Stata to rename the old variable to a new one. To give the old variable sex a new name gender. Yeah? Rename this to this. Done. And execute it. Yeah, that's recording. No, 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 they're different. Yeah, you can you can create a, a completely new variable by recording, but here you're not creating anything. You're just renaming the existing variable. Yeah, recording is usually a creation of new new data, new variable, not new data. So highlight and execute, please. Done. And please, please check the variables box the, the, to the right. If you highlight it, you will see that the name of sex is now gender. To the right. You now it's the right most column with variable names listed. Next. Now we will use this new variable or the renamed variable to split the data. Summarize. Hmm? What was it? 
Copy both of them, please. <coughs> oh, we need to spell out right? Sir. Yep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Misspelled, yeah? Thank you. Um, let me double check. Is this by? Was it by? Um, ah, yeah, I made a mistake here, guys. Um, syntax error. It won't work this way. I'm sorry. I um, let me just check this. This is summarized, isn't it? There's something that we need to do before this step. I jumped forward and and also this syntax error here that I want to shift down. Please, can you give yourself uh, some space between the two lines of code here, rename and summarize? We forgot to take a look at the uh, numerical values for gender. That will be codebook gender. Yeah? Type this last line, guys. This, yeah. Yes. Just type this one. Ignore this for now. You don't it. Just push, push it down for now. And type this one now, right after. Because I forgot to, to check the details of gender first. I need to see if it's really uh, what I wanted. Uh, and type this and execute it, please. Type and execute it, please. No, 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 just this, just, just highlighted. Just the highlighted bit. Can you see that now? Yeah? I have... I have gender here with... Uh, with details of the values that it takes, the numerical values, yes? You are getting... numerical values <coughs> 0 and 1 0 for male so if, if a person is male we label it as 0 for male label and 1 the numerical value takes a value for label female and notice that the frequency is uh, 4,839 people were uh, male participants in the survey and then 5,453 are female so about 600 people oh there's about 600 more females in the group than the males yeah Still, it's balanced group. Better than uh, not having this <laughs> balance at all. I mean, three three percent. I think it's about three percent difference here. Okay, now <coughs> we will use these numeric values to split our data into uh, by gender into two groups. The aim here is to look at if there is any pay gap among males and females. And I think what you see will be a bit surprising, also stressing. I'll tell you why it's stressing in a minute. Okay, let's go back. And now we'll use the summarize command, but with a proper proper coding. I, I, I had a syntax here, as I said. So summarize our pay detail. Uh, next one. Sum uh, yep. Now this is... Uh, removed completely we want we don't want that summarize our pay if gender equals um, what's male zero and Can then detail yeah you need two equal signs this is otherwise it becomes an assignment code for assigning a value on um, then one and I will explain what this means, basically. The first line of code, we've done it already, yeah? Summarizing everything in one line. But in the second and third line, we're trying to 
create a summary statistics for how will it pay split by gender? Yes. What are the when you execute them, you're doing the last two su summaries only. Last two together, yeah. Not the, not the top one, we've done the top one already. Last two. Summarize, okay, if gender zero, summarize, okay, if gender one. Now what it is is this, guys. We are telling st Stata, please summarize this variable if or when gender takes a value one, that's, fe uh, that's when the gender is female. Yeah, the variable just it, it takes a one. And I want the details. The first one is for males. Um, <coughs> let's do that. Let me do that myself as well. Do you think, what do you think guys? Look at the table, look at your screen and tell me, tell me what you think. What does this table reveal us? Anything? We, shh, guys, you see, on average, women here, even after we remove it, no, we didn't actually, yeah? Women look like, women get much less than male counterparts. Look at this. On average, a, a random male would earn 15 pounds an hour while a, a, a random girl would be earning about 12 pounds an hour. So about three pounds something difference, right? This is per hour. So multiplied by the number of hours you will be working in a year. A huge earning difference, yeah? Huge wealth creation by males. Then. But I suppose all of you guys leaving this university will be living with the same qualification, BS, BSc in business management? No. Yeah? Accounting. Accounting, say accounting. Then you will have, you should have really have an equal chance of earning the same amount. But it looks like historically, males were getting more. So that's an in inequality, right? In in the UK, pay gap, Gen gender pay gap, and variability. Look at the variability. Male variability is 18 pounds an hour. So this is huge variability. That means there's a high chance of earning higher wages among the males than females who earn oh, whose variability is seven pounds an hour. So every single number for females is lower than for the males here. Very stri striking. But again, tabling, tabulating the variables is a good idea, but graphing is even a better idea. So why not to look at graphs? And when you're dealing with histo uh, 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 continuous weight uh, data or continuous variables, it's best to graph using histograms or a bar chart. And we'll create both of these. And we will try to eliminate the top 1% earners because they are possibly skewing our data, especially for male, because there is someone earning 900, 000, uh, 932 pounds. Now, let's give it, give it a try now. Comment, please, uh, graphing. I'm trying to see if I spelled continuous correctly. Is this correct? Yeah. I rely on the word editor usually to spell check. It underlies it takes <laughs> When you type quickly and when you aren't sure of the thing, I think word spell check would help. Yeah, that. Huh? That oh, thank you. You see, I don't have the spell check, so you are doing the dog. <laughs> data or variables yeah okay let's do this um we'll start with histogram histogram our pay if our pay is and typing is 48.08 by now one one other code that i want you to just squeeze in there is this our histogram we don't we aren't going to graph this one because we don't have much time left now very strange that I'm typing female here because I, I got used to this with the other groups guys with the other groups I have female some of the groups now this is gender not female because without groups I had female, but then there was a confusion among the students. 
Uh, so I created, I decided to change gen gender and gender in both. And I'll explain <coughs> what this is basically now. Once you finish and look, look at the board quickly. Now in the first line, I am creating a histogram for the whole variable, all the data that the variable contains, uh, all observations. But I'm splitting it by gender, so male, female. But in the second line, I am creating a histogram, or is it is a counter, but is an equivalent to bar chart without the gaps. I'm creating that histogram for our pay, if only if our pay takes a value less than this amount. You remember the 99 percentile. This was 48 percent. So I'm ignoring the top one percent earners. But I'm also splitting the data by gender. So I'll get two histograms, one male, one female histogram. Now, this creates a percentage frequency in histogram. But I want it to be frequency, this count. So after gender, close the bracket and type frec, like the frequency, frec. Frec, yeah? Take a look, I typed it. You don't need the frequency if you don't want the uh, count, but if you want percentages, ignore the frequency, but just for the fun of doing this, we'll do frequency. And then highlight the last line. Don't do the first one. We don't need that again. This is just for your records. You can, you can run it at home later. Um, highlight and execute the last line. And if you don't have any mistakes there, if you didn't mistype, misspell, you should have a, a nice set of two histograms. And I'm still waiting, I don't know why. <coughs> or maybe it created. No? My stata is too slow, probably. Yeah. Here it is, finally. Because you may have highlighted the first line instead of last line, if you have a different bar chart, yeah? Close it. Give it a comment. Is, is yours fine? Here's your graph. Close it. Okay. Let's comment on it quickly, guys. You see the frequency of. Mm, what was the question? Working? No? earning the top 1% wage basically. The people who earn more than 48 pounds is removed here. Um, again, there's a, the, the, the distribution of male earning is much, male wage is much spread out, you see. Uh, there are more people who earn 20 pounds and over see, among the males than the females. Yeah? Females are mostly concentrated in the lower, lower pay of, lower pay. Really? So that tells you this. Uh, this is a bit stressing, isn't it? You guys, I mean, this is historical data. I guess you know, five years on, I don't think this inequality disappeared, right? So you guys earn, I mean, male and female students coming out of this university with this exactly the same degrees, exactly the same skills. I guess you end up earning less. That's what the implication is here for this from this data. But I guess you should really be optimistic. I guess because the gender gap has been an issue, but this year it has been last just last year it has been a big issue because. If media started talking about it. You know, like BBC itself has big gender gap. Yeah? They, they, they were talking about gender gap, but it turns out that their own reporters, the two people sitting, male and female, reporting news, reading a news, uh, getting about 100,000 pound difference, difference between them. Yeah? Kind of thing. So gender gap is there, is real. So if you're doing your assignment, I believe you will have a different variable to split the data. So you, our pay, the variable our pay will be your main variable, but your splitting grouping variable would be, for example, British and non. British maybe, gay, straight, 
born in UK, born outside. So you want to compare this with non-gender variable. You have to take anything, <coughs> but not gender. So this do <coughs> file really is your code box, yeah? Hold on to this. Yeah, you want to just replace gender with your own variable and run the code, you know, you get the results. And then we use this data for our... Yeah, this will be the data, yeah. So our pay yeah. is your main, I think, because you're looking at gap, pay gap, right? Yes. Based on, they say, na nationality, ethnicity, things like that, yeah? Okay, we'll come back to histograms later again. Uh, we don't have much time left. Now, a better graph for this uh, continuous data that reveals more distributional parameters would be box plot. Let's create a box plot. Close this and type graph. Oh, okay, let's let's do that. Um, box plot. Again, a set of two lines again. Now, the first one is just a generic graph that creates a box plot for every observation of this variable. But we just want to get rid of this top 1% earnest. Just execute the last bit, last line. Execute the last line. No, not the first one. First one is for you to do the, the experimentation at home. Um, first one doesn't split the data by gender. It just creates one single box plot for everything. And here it is. Does anyone want to give us some comments on this graph? Comment on this, please, anyone? Feel free. Which one is medium? The middle line? There are four lines here, right? Top line, this line, this middle line, this line, and that line four lines. The median is this this middle line, this 50th percentile, and look at this. Every single bit here is is just above the female. Yeah? Every single bit for male is every single critical point is is for higher for male than female. The the spread is also <coughs> higher. Ignore this the the black or the bold bold line. These are actual dots overlapping each other, these are individuals who, who are outliers in the data. We focus on the middle part. No, look at this now. The maximum pay of an average male is also higher than the maximum pay of average female in the data. The average or median average pay of male is also higher than this female, so it's below 10 pounds, and while the male one is above 10 pounds, much above, in fact, 13 pounds, so something like that. Even the minimum pay for females is lower than the male minimum, yeah? These are outliers. Yes, individuals, not many of them. This is the maximum. Mode, you mean? No, it's, it's not actually. The mode is most repeating number. Most repeating value, yeah. We don't know by looking at this, the mode, yeah. Um, the middle 50% of people, guys, middle 50% in the sample is this Interquartile range, represented by the interquartile range. Oh Their wages are between just under 10 and just close to 10. And it's wider for males, indicating that there's a high chance of getting high pay among the males than the females. This is yeah, it's wider. Yeah. yeah, it starts higher as well, it's wider as well. And the top 25% of people in this sample are here, is within the top line and then the First into quartile range. So each of these critical points represents something meaningful here, guys. Anyone else? Any, anything else you want to talk about here? I think you can still talk about the the outliers. If you want to, yeah. Because you could say that um, there are more outliers on the female side, meaning that it's not normal for the female. Perfect, yeah. 
There are only a few, right? Females earning this huge salary. That's why it's not normal. Yeah? But for me, it's apparently it looks normal, yeah? To a great extent. And there are a few outliers who earn more than, what, 34 pounds an hour, yeah? So for females, earning a, a 40 pounds an hour is probably, <laughs> what do you call it? It's not a norm, yeah? Because state <coughs> is treating them as outliers. As soon as you are treated as an outlier, you want an average person. So average person in a female group would be earning between uh, whatever the value here at the bottom to so this. The others are actually non normal. That's strange. And that's actually equal inequality, inequality in pay. Anything else you want to do? So that by the way, this is what you're gonna talk about, yeah, in USA. You have to title it. I guess you know how to create the title for this one. You go to a graph editor, start graph editor and then write title. Not now, do it later. You can save the file, import it to a Word document, things like this. Anything else you want to talk about? This is the end of it, by the way. Yeah. End of the class. If you don't have any questions, anything else, any input, any contribution, any thoughts, views, anything? No? Okay. Um, next week will be a uh, will be our fifth. Uh, is it fifth? Yeah, fifth lab, and I think it will be most interesting lab. Hopefully, we'll. Have some fun next week. Just want to remind you guys. I want to remind you about the about Nancy's classes. They, they are held in Innovation Pod, and the, she has drop-in sessions. If you want to go to where to get help section of the web page, and then email her. If any questions, email me as well.